Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US. I'm super excited to have you here with me today. Yay! I am just coming in at the nick of time. I'm scheduled to, to come to you every Tuesday at 12.30 and it is 12.31 according to my clock. So I'm right in the edge there. So I didn't get on early today. So all right, I'm happy to have each of you here um, watching. Um, whether you're watching me live or on the replay, I am very happy to have you here. Okay, so a couple announcements before I get started because I wanna make sure you're aware. Um, my awesome April event is going on now. I do this every year. And basically what it is, is for every $25 you spend with me before shipping and tax, you get to choose a goodie from my retired stash. There are so many awesome things and there have already been many things taken. So be sure to get your orders in before April 30th and take advantage of my awesome April special. You can choose items from the last chance list that's out going on now through May 2nd. Now, if you've got items on that last chance list, uh, so those are items retiring out of the 2021-2022 annual catalog. Wait, I think I have it here. Oh, no, nope, that's the current one. There it is. This one, if you have items out of that catalog that you are wanting, be sure to get them before they're gone. Things are selling quickly, but there's still plenty of things to choose from. So you definitely wanna get that in. Plus you get extra goodies from my stash, right? So with a new catalog or with a catalog retiring, that means a new catalog is coming. And oh my goodness, we have some great things coming our way. And if you don't wanna wait until May 3rd to get your hands on those, join my diamonds team and you can put some of these new goodies in your starter kit. Yay, yay, yay. Um, if you um, have shopped with me in the last year, you get a new catalog um, from me in the mail for free. I do need you to confirm your, your address. Um, we're having some issues where the address is in the uh, Stampin' Up! side of the site and what we can see as a demonstrator is not always accurate. So I want you to confirm your email address with me or your shipping address with me, please. And if you've not shopped with me before and you still want a catalog, um, reach out to me um, and we'll, we'll work that out. Um, I will have an in-color club posting soon. Hopefully I'll get this done this week, as well as um, I'm gonna be holding designer paper share and a ribbon share as well. I've had people ask me about those as well. All right, what are we going to do today? We are going to play a little bit more with some of our decorative masks. So we are going to um, learn how to use embossing paste with them today. And we're going to color our embossing paste and change it up a little bit. So we're going to use the masks in a couple different ways. I will show you that in just a moment. We'll switch the camera over, right? Oh, and don't forget, see that, that class behind me? That's going to be coming soon. And if you want to be in the know and know when all of my classes post, don't forget to join my email list. All right. I am going to switch the video over. Yay, and let's get started. All righty. Oh, good, so glad to see you guys here today. Whoops, I lost my place. Hey, Kay, Tammy, Mary, hey, Dana, my friend, Dana Sullivan. All right, so this is the project we're gonna make today. And I don't know if you can see, see this up here, this texture right there? So it's a tone on tone um, with embossing paste. Look at that. You can see it's raised. And then we're also gonna use the, um, the uh, decorative mask to create a collage of florals. So this is actually um, a project that we'll post on my blog tomorrow for the Around the World on Wednesday blog hop. So we had a challenge. Um, so if you wanna check out the challenge and see my inspiration photo and all of that, be sure to uh, tune in to my website tomorrow morning. All right, so again, we are gonna use the Butterflies and Flowers decorative masks. And there are six masks in this collection, blah, blah, blah. And we're gonna use two of them today. We've used some of the others in some of the other uh, videos that I've done, but those are the two we're gonna focus on today. And uh, so let's get started. Let's start with the background so I can show you how I did that. So when you're working with de decorative masks, my first thing is let's get out a nice big piece of scrap paper. And I actually like to tape mine down when I do with it. There it is. I like to use remov removable tape. So I use painter's tape. You can use what makes you happy, but I'm gonna use some painter's tape. Oh, maybe. So I'm gonna really just tape this right down to my surface so that it doesn't shift on me. And we can pull this up in a little bit. 
You could put it underneath in the middle if you prefer. I'm just going to tack down the corners real quick. Next, I'm going to bring in my So Saffron card base. And let's go ahead and fold this in half and give that a nice, good crease. All right, so get our bone folder there. Now, I want this to stay put. So I'm going to take some of my painter's tape and I'm gonna get some of the tackiness off of it with my fingers because I don't want it super sticky to the point that it tears my cardstock. I'm just gonna loop that around and I'm actually going to tape my card base down to my scrap paper, making sure my fold is at the top. Not that it really matters at this point, but it's okay. All right, this way, none of this is gonna shift on me as I'm working with my masks. All right, next, I want to tape the mask right down onto my cardstock, right? That way it doesn't shift. So let's grab in a little bit more painter's tape and it's slightly larger than my card base, but not crazy amounts larger than my card base. So I am going to add some right here and I'm kind of just tacking down the edge. I just don't want it to shift on me is, is, is the only thing I'm looking for here. Whoops. And I forgot to take the tacky off. So that means it may rip the paper, but it's okay. It's scrap paper. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. So now we are prepared. I do have a paper towel as needed um, here because <laughs> we may need that as well. So let me show you how I colored the embossing paste first. So I keep my embossing paste in a container. I know it seems silly, a plastic container. Inside the bag that it comes in, the little Ziploc, I found if I don't keep it double, double um, protected, I guess, airtight, it dries out super fast once you open it. So um, if I keep it in the bag and put it in a plastic container, I have great results with it. So there's a lot of paste in here. So we have two colors right now. We have a plain white and a shimmer white. And I love both. I have plain white here, and then I've got a palette knife. And you can see it's like icing, right? And so I'm just going to take some out and I actually already have some mix, but I want to show you how I did this. So for what I'm doing, I'm just going to take about that much. And I've got an old container. So this actually had um, embossing powders in it. So I've got an old container and that is actually still in pretty good shape. So I'll be able to use that again today. So I'm going to put my paste in my container. Let's go ahead and close this up because I don't want this exposed to air any longer than it needs to be while I'm not using it. So I'm, I'm literally putting it back in the Ziploc bag and I'm gonna put it back in my, my plastic container. So I'm double protecting it so that it doesn't get the air so that it doesn't dry out. All right, now, because I'm dealing with a really light color, I'm gonna take a re-anchor and I'm gonna drop in one drop. Now, you could do more if you wanted, depending on the color and, and how deep you want your color. I am using So Saffron, which will match my card base because I want a tone on tone appearance. And then I'm just going to use this knife. You could use a plastic spoon, whatever makes you happy. This is what I'm going to use to apply it to my card base. Whoops, sorry about that. I got a little crazy with my uh, stirring here. Messed with the camera. All right. So I want to make sure that's stirred in really well and it's the color I want it to be. And it is. And I'm not going to do a ton, so this is why I don't have a bunch of um, paste. Now, what I want to do is I want to add some of this embossing paste right to my mask. And I'm just going to take my little tool here and spread it out. Now, you can put as little or as much. You can do the whole surface if you want. You can do just part of the surface. I'm just going to do a little bit. I am not worried about this being solid solid uh, design, right? I don't care if it's partially. I think that adds some coolness factor to it. And I'm just doing opposite corners. And again, you can do as much of the card base as you want or as little as you want. And this stuff goes, a little goes a long way, as you can see. You only need a thin layer. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. All right, now cleanup is important as well. So you wanna get this embossing paste off your tools and as soon as you can, right? So I'm just gonna seal that up in a lid. If I let that sit for too long, it will get hard. So I'm gonna wipe off what I can on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna put, because we're gonna be live for a while, I'm gonna put my tool in a, in a soapy water dish that I've got to the side. 
I'm going to go ahead and peel this mask up. So let's go ahead and pull that tape away. I'm going to throw that tape out because we don't need it right now. Now, if you guys tried this, have you used um, embossing paste yet? It's so much fun. You can use it without coloring, but I wanted this to be a tone on tone look. How cool is that? I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, I would wanna wash the embossing paste off this as quickly as possible as well. I'm just gonna put this in my soapy water and hope that by the end of the video, I'll be able to clean it. That's my, that's my plan, is that if it's sitting in wet water, it won't dry out. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, right? All right, so I'm gonna peel this off carefully. All right, and I'm gonna set this aside for just a few moments. It's already somewhat dry, it's a little tacky but I wanna make sure it hardens all the way. So before I let this sit, I am gonna run my finger along the edge here and remove the excess paste that might be sticking out beyond. And I'm just wiping this on my paper towel. Okay, so now I can let that sit for a little bit and let that completely harden. Can you guys see it? How cool is that? So it's a tone on tone texture. And again, you could do the whole thing if you wanted to. I just wanted it to be a little bit subtle. All right. Let's get the paste off our scrap paper, or we could move to a different scrap paper if we wanted to. I'm just going to wipe off the chunkiness of it. Perfect. Flip my paper towel inside out. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in the white cardstock layer because I want to go ahead and do my blending brush with that. So I'm going to lay this down. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to put out my flowers here where I want them to be. I want to make a cluster of roses, right? So I'm going to lay this down where I want it. Now, you want to mask off any areas that are over the top of your layer um, that you don't want ink on. So for me, this right here and this right here, I need to mask those off. I don't need to worry about this over here because it's not over my layer. Let's get some of that tackiness off so it doesn't tear our paper when we go to take this off. So I'll put that down. I do want to mask that corner as well. I found that if I um, if I do not take all these extra precautions, that this can be just a hot mess, and that makes me crazy. I don't like getting ink everywhere. Um, I don't like getting sticky everywhere. So it's just me, and I know I'm a strange person, but that's what I do. So if you take the extra moments and do this, you are gonna be so much happier in the long run. I can't tell you how much happier you're gonna be. All right, so I'm grabbing my ink pads that I forgot. Yes, I did. Okay, and we are gonna apply Fresh Freesia ink first. All right. So I've got a blending brush and I'm going to go straight into the pad and grab some ink. And I like to use a circular motion and I am going to apply ink to my open flower cluster here. Okay. Now, this is similar to what we've been doing with some of the other projects I've shown you. I love this cluster of bouquet, whatever you want to call it, of flowers. It's so pretty, just so pretty. Now, you can do the depth of your ink as dark or light as you want. I'm gonna stop there. Now, this next step is super important, or at least I'm finding it super important. I'm gonna wipe away the excess ink on the mask and the tape. This is gonna keep my surface cleaner as I start to move this around, because like I said, I'm gonna do a cluster of flowers, right? So more than one set. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this mask away. Is that so cool? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so let's kind of fill in. Where do we want to go next? Let's put, hmm, I'm going to come back to that area. I'm going to come over here, I think, and do it like that, okay? And it looks like my tape is in a good spot, but look, now I've got this exposed. So let's go ahead and bring in another piece of tape um, and take the tacky off. And we'll lay this down as well. Again, we do not want to accidentally, hopefully I don't get it over there, right? That tends to be what happens to me. I don't know about you guys, but I am messy. And you think you're not going to get it someplace, and then you pull off the mask, and you're like, oh, darn, I have a corner. I did not mean to have a corner. Sometimes you can cover it up. 
with your sentiment layer or an embellishment even, depending on how crazy it is. This set of masks is fun because you can always add leaves if you want to. For this particular project, I'm not gonna add the leaves. I just want the flowers. Okay, so again, we're gonna wipe away the excess off our mask. Hey, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, if you guys are enjoying the content that I'm sharing with you, I very much appreciate you sharing it with your crafty friends. Uh, it helps me get found. Um, so yeah, lots of fun, helps my business. Okay, so let's kind of go up here. Mm, I think I'm gonna do one, how about right there? Now, I probably should go ahead and mask this off. It seems excessive, I know. But if I don't, I'm gonna end up with a line here, right? The other thing I'm seeing is that because these flowers are also over the top of my card base, I probably should go ahead and mask those off as well. Again, I know it seems a little bit excessive, but it's not worth the risk and having your project be not what you want it to be in the end. So take the few minutes. I promise you'll be happy with it if you take the extra few minutes to get, to get that masked off properly. All right, so now I don't have to be so careful. I'm Not that I'm not trying to be careful, but you know. Perfect. I'm loving this. It's going to look so cool. And this is just layer one. We're going to do two layers of ink on this. So I'm going to, I'm a little long today, longer than normal, right? Okay. Now we're going to pull our mask off again. I got a lot of tape going on here. Let's see if we can move some of this tape. And I'm just going to put this on my tabletop. I've got this tape down pretty darn good. Okay. Nice. All right. Oh, look how cool that's already looking. So fun. Oh, it looks like a little owl face. Oh, that's funny. Dana, you crept me up. All right. So I want to add in one more flower in here just because it'll make me happier. Um, so let's see if we do that right there. I know I've got a little overlap with this one, but I think I'm going to be happy with that. I probably should go ahead and mask this one off again just so we don't get ink on it. As, sh as soon as I don't mask it off is exactly when I am going to, um, I probably shouldn't, shouldn't have gone that far over on that one either. Let's see what that looks like. Hopefully it's still cool. Yeah, you can see a little bit of an overlap, but I, I'm okay with it. I got a little crazy there. All right, so that is layer one. Whoops, I didn't wipe it. You guys are supposed to stop me from making those mistakes. We'll wipe it now. Hopefully I don't have ink all over me. All right. So that was layer one. Okay. Now we're going to go to layer two. So let's take some of this tape off of our mask because we're going to need it placed in a different spot anyway. If you want to change out your tape at this point because you feel like it might be messy, go right ahead. I'd rather use too much tape and not have problems. Okay. So one thing about this mask that people have had trouble with is lining up the second layer. So just know that the orientation is the same. So if you've got this flower on the left, that's the same flower right there. So you would just slide it over. So for instance, here's this. So now all I have to do is slide this up and I'm gonna twist this until I can get it lined up. There we go. It takes a moment. So you can see now all I can see is purple. So now I can go ahead and tape this down. Um, let's grab this longer piece here. And now I'm ready to apply my second color. Now, if I were going to change colors, I could change blending brushes. This is a purple and I tend to just use the same blending brush for purples. Since I started lighter, I don't really need to run this off, but you can see I've got ink all in there. I'm going to go ahead and go into Highland Heather and I'm gonna add a little bit of darker color onto this. I don't wanna go too crazy dark, but I do want it darker. Now you could go back over it with Fresh Freesia instead of Highland Heather if you wanted and just have a really nice 
um, depth of color okay, without changing the tone. I've decided to change the tone. Look at that, my scrap paper is coming to get that back down there. All right, so isn't that really pretty? So again, we could do fresh freesia on fresh freesia if we prefer, but I, I kind of like this. All right, so let's line this back up again. Now I've got a whole lot exposed out here. So let's see if we can get some of our tape and to mask this off so we don't make a big mess. All right, so there's that edge. And then I probably need this edge as well, just in case. Oh, good. Thanks, Kay, for joining in. Appreciate you stopping by today. So if you guys are enjoying the, um, the decorative masks and would like to learn more, I do have registration going on now for my Butterflies and Flowers Decorative Masks class. That ends on Friday, this Friday. So I'd love for you to join me. I'll give you a peek of those projects here in a bit. And then I'm also teaching another cool technique, or at least I think it's cool, uh, at Makers Mojo using the decorative masks as well. So Makers Mojo is a partnership I have with my friends, Melissa Kerman, Audra Monk, Anne-Marie Heil, and Joe Blackman. And it's an all day stamping event. If you can't make it live, it's not a problem. We send out the uh, video and PDF tutorials after the event, um, but it's an all day crafting online event. So, and our goal is to show you all kinds of different things. So we might teach a technique or a fold, um, maybe you've done it before, maybe you haven't done it before, but we show you all kinds of different alternates because the whole point is to be able to use what products you have on hand. Isn't this cool? One more, we've got this one more corner to do. Loving it, I'm loving and I'm loving it. All right, so let's line this one up. Gotta find my alignment here. There we go. I'm getting there, I'm slow, but I'm getting it. All right, I think this time I'm gonna mask off, maybe mask off this flower so I don't overlap. Is that crazy? We'll try it. It might not look good, but we'll find out. I'll do that as well. Because I only want those two with the darker. I think it's going to give it a little bit more definition. All right, perfect. Again, we're going to wipe off this excess ink and double check it. And we should be good to go from here. Oh, good. I mean, you're liking this technique. Yeah, it's fun. It just takes, a like I said, a little bit of extra patience. Um, so that you don't end up with ink where you don't want ink. Oh yeah, that's really nice. So pretty, isn't it? You got this nice, wonderful cluster of flowers. So now I will just uh, take my mask and wash it with some soapy water and I'm good to go there as well. Cool? All right, let's go ahead and clean this up and build out our card. All the hard parts done, right? So I'll just throw all this away. I don't need it. It literally is scrap paper. You can use grid paper if you'd like. That's a, that's a really good um, thing to use. Helps you line things up. All right. So this should be nice and dry. Our curd base is nice and dry. Yep. So cool. So I want to pull in. I've got a piece of navy, Knight of Navy cardstock, which I seem to have misplaced. I don't know how this happens to me. I had it all set out and now I don't see it. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know where it went, really. Oh, it's on the floor, that's why. It fell. All right, I've got a piece of Knight of Navy and I have textured it with the Hive 3D embossing folder. Look how cool that is. Lots of great texture on that. And we're just gonna adhere this right down on our card base. Now, because this is textured and this has texture, I am going to use the dreaded liquid glow. I know it's not my favorite, but sometimes liquid glue is the right adhesive. 
You could use stamp and seal, but my concern is with the textures going on is that it actually wouldn't adhere very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up <laughs> and use the liquid glue there. All right, cute. Let's slide that over a little bit, ever so slightly. Okay, cute, right? So now you can see that texture, those different textures peeking out. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and then this layer here, I'm going to go ahead and layer this on fresh Freesia cardstock. I want a subtle border. And we'll choose our stamp and seal for that. Oh, Gwen, good, I'm glad you like this one. It's, it's really fun. These masks are so much fun. If you don't have them, they're super inexpensive. I think it's $10 for the six pack. Um, and they're just so fun. There's so many things you can do with them. I think I'm gonna change my orientation so where I've got a little extra ink down here that I'm gonna put it over in that corner. So let's go ahead and pop this up with some dimensionals. I'm long today. I'm not, I, I'm usually under 30 minutes. But I'm long today, just a bit. This technique takes just a little bit longer because, you know, there's so many nuances to keeping it clean. All right, so that's down nicely. Next, I've already prepared my sentiments. So I've used the potted succulent dies and I've cut uh, this label with Knight of Navy and I stamped my sentiment from the um, potted uh, Simply Succulent stamp set and uh, die cut that out of that label. So that's the coordinating stamp set with these dies. I did not remember to grab that. If you guys want to see it, if you're not sure which one I'm talking about, let me know and I'll, um, I'll run across the room and get it. I am going to use liquid glue to put this label down. You could use stamp and seal. It doesn't really matter. Oh, look how awesome that is. I love it. All right, and then of course, we're gonna use dimensionals to pop up our white label. Why not? We can. Now you guys don't have to use dimensionals on all the layers that I use dimensionals on. I like it. Whoops. Perfect. Two more. Put that off. All right, we'll pop that right on the front. So pretty. Now, I used the Fresh Freesia ribbon, woven ribbon on this, and I actually cut it in half. I don't know if you can see that. So I cut the ribbon in half, um, but I used all my ribbon and I haven't gotten more that has arrived. So my box, it hasn't shipped yet. So I'm going to change this up a little bit and I'm gonna pull in one of our brand new ribbons that's coming our way in May. So May 3rd, we're gonna to start to see this starry sky and this has a metallic edge in it. I love it. It's not quite the same as navy. I could have used Starry Sky um, cardstock with this, but I wanted to stay with navy. But I think this coordinates really nicely with that little fleck. And one of my favorite things is that this is one of those ribbons that you can pull and make it a little bit wider. Kind of fun, right? I'm not going to do that for this project. I'm just going to keep it small. And I'm taking about 10 inches or so. And I'm just going to tie a little bow, hold that knot. Now, I, you know what I think I'm going to do instead? I like this double bow look. So let me fold this in half, get a longer length of it. All right, so now I got two pieces, right? Let's move that out of the way so you guys hopefully can see me. See if I can get a little closer. I'll make my loops. Crisscross up through the hole. Nice. Now, still, I'm going to hold that knot. Hold this. My friend Dana, I don't know if she's still on here, but she had shown us a really cool way to make a double bow um, at one of our Blue Ridge Stampin' Escapes. And I still can't do it. I have to watch the video every time. I can't remember how to do it. Someday I'll learn and I'll show you guys. All right, so I love that. I love all that extra sticking out. So let's go ahead and clip those ends off. We don't need all that excess there, right? And then I'm just gonna tuck this knot right in the edge of that label there. So let's grab our take your pick, because I don't like to touch the glow dots. They remind me of bookers when the kids were little. I know that's gross. 
All right, and I'm just gonna lift that ever so slightly, push that knot right down into the glue dots, and then we've got this little sprig off the side. Kind of fun, right? Changed it up a little bit. So on this one, I did fresh freesia on fresh freesia. On this one, I did fresh freesia with Highland Heather over the top. Pretty sure that's what I did. Well, I say I had Highland Heather on the first one, but it looks different today, doesn't it? Maybe it's the depth of the freesia I did. All right, let's finish this off with some in-color jewels. Sad to see these going. These are on the last chance list. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna dump the bag out. I have partial packs. And let's grab some of the freesia ones and put that on the part of the card where I have got the floral images. And then I'm gonna take, technically it's pale papaya, but when you put it on the so saffron, it coordinates really, really nicely. So I'm just gonna put a couple of these pale papaya gems right down. You know what, let's add another freesia. Let's add a small one right there. So I've got like a little sprinkling of gems on that one side, and then we can clean this all up. Cool. Oh, you haven't gotten your pre-order yet? Oh yeah, the ribbon is super pretty. It's gorgeous. So all five of the new in colors are, are just fantastic. So I will have um, an in color club, uh, paper and ribbon share. I hope I'll be able to announce those, um, get that information out to my email list in the next um, week. So if you're not on my email list already, and you want to be in the know, definitely uh, sign up for my email list. The link will be in the description of the um, um, video when I'm done. All right, let's finish off the inside. Now I kept it really simple on the inside and I'm just going to layer uh, some white over some navy and pop that in there. Now you could totally use the blending brushes and add some more of the floral element on the inside, um, or you could stamp it if you want to. I figured I was gonna be pretty long with you guys today, uh, longer than normal. Um, so I didn't want to keep you here overnight, right? <laughs> so I like, I like videos that are shorter. I don't know about you guys. I don't have the patience, I don't think. All right, so that's layered. Let's get this on our card inside and then this one is good to go. You do lots of fun things with different colors on this one. But if you check out my blog post tomorrow, you'll know why I chose what I did, right? Yeah, you like the blue ribbon? Yeah, it's really, really pretty. And it, it does totally change the look, but I think it's just as cool. What do you guys think? Blue or fresh freesia? You'll have to let me know. Yes, yes. All right, what else? I think that's it. Oh, I told you I'd show you a sneak peek of the project. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this over. So this is my butterflies and uh, flowers mask class that's going to be happening. So you got this little butterfly one and then this ombre. Sometimes I put stuff on the inside, sometimes I don't. Yeah, this one I did. And then we've got this butterfly one. And then there's a fun fold. Cute. And then one more, this one. And then you've got that on the inside there. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the uh, video description. I will go back in and add the complete supply list and cut dimension. So if you need to order any supplies, um, you can do that just from those links. And if you've got what you want to use at home, you can uh, just go ahead and cut and get going and make this project. So cool, yes. All right, so I'm seeing that people are liking the blue better. Okay, cool. Yeah, the blue ribbon, the blue ribbon wins. Yay, it's a little more, um, it's bolder, right? And I love the sparkle of it. So very cool. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you again next Tuesday for a little more crafty fun. Don't forget to share the video with your crafty friends if you're enjoying the content. And if you're watching on replay, subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. If you've got questions on anything I've shared or any links um, that you need, just leave me a note and I will get back to you. Thanks so much. Bye for now.